Well, she looks fabulous, doesn't she? Hey? She does. She looks really good. Um, here we are at Sun Studios, and I'm working on a project called Made Up. It's a collaborative project with uh, hair and makeup artists. And what I've asked them to do is be their fantasy self, their alter ego, or their own self. I've asked them to experiment with this idea and I'm looking to have an exhibition here uh, as a celebration of the end of COVID, but that doesn't seem to be the way it's going to go <laughs> with COVID. I want to take you through the, the process of doing a project like this from beginning to end. Doing a new project, you just got to experiment. So I get an idea about something and then I, I just do it because doing solves the problem. And literally in within one session or two sessions, you kind of realise is this got legs or it's not, it's a one-shot thing. I like a gallery of work all the time. I like doing a gallery of images. I'm not out there looking for the one great image. I'm looking for a book. Uh, yeah, I'm Andy Stevens. I'm Gary Heary's uh, digital uh, operator uh, slash assistant slash something else. Our working relationship is Gary's the creative and I'm the technician, so I just make sure everything's running and he can get what he needs out of his subjects without having to worry if stuff's working properly or not. Gary Heary is a classic portrait photographer. He uses one light 90% of the time. It's a very simple setup. It's a portrait light that we move around depending on the subject. But I'm quite top lighty when I say that. Like I have the light very high up and I, I try and create a shadow under the eyes a little bit. Because these days, if you, um, even if it's a deep shadow, it's so easy to lighten that shadow up. But you still get this drama in people's face and, and contouring. One light, small light, usually a little umbrella, old school. I've been doing this since dot, you know, and it still works great. It always will work great. I love, I love flash, I love the studio, I love the control. I call it controlled spontaneity, where I create a very safe environment for someone to be themselves. And then I push things along a little bit there if I feel like I'm not getting a response. So when you're shooting a celebrity or an actor or something, it's quite easy to do that because they've got so much, they're so comfortable in front of the camera. But when you start moving into so, so-called real people, uh, you have to use different techniques. You know, the, my concentration is about that, that moment between people, that, that gut moment that, that connects with people in a portrait. I keep on talking about gut in photography. So, see, 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 the mind can get in the way of things sometimes, you know? When you go through a shoot and you're editing or shooting, I, I can feel the moment um, coming, I can see it when I get it straight away and I usually mark that shot up. I mean, 99% of the time I'm right about it. And then I even like to show the subject, that, that image, to see if I'm getting a similar reaction from them. You have to encourage people to participate with you. I don't hide everything. I'm really collaborative. I'm really very much involved in people participating in what I'm doing. After all, it is an image of them, usually. I'm also shooting on my GFX 50, the new Fuji film camera. You know, medium format, these huge files, it's kind of nice to be able to crop in sometimes. I, I did do a couple of other shots of her. She's a bit worried about her, um, her chins and stuff. It's tricky because I made a jump, but I think we can clean, just clean her up a little bit there for her. But this is great, isn't it? The, I got it all in one shot, hey? It looks great. That is really a lovely shot, hey? Yeah. Oh, it is. You're a good photographer, Gary. 
You're a great photographer, Gary. <laughs> I don't need validation, I made money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and let's uh, look at Richard Captain. We'll see if he needs sharpening up or anything. Um, uh, so I have put just a little bit of sharpening onto him, just to pull it, pull it forward a little bit for the prints. Yeah, okay. It's not a lot, just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, okay. You've hit it really well. My fabulous retoucher here is Selena, who's, uh, she is a pro beyond belief. There's only one other person up with Selena, but it's all about the file. You've got to know everything. And it's fantastic when you work with people that do, it's like they do this every day of their life. It's like easy, you know, people, people who are really good at something make it look easy. And Selena certainly does that. And she's got a great eye. That's the other thing. You learn very quickly if the person you're retouching with has a really good eye. Like I can trust Selena to pick up stuff that I would miss, in fact. Yeah, just doing a little bit of checking here with uh, a bit of a, a little proof. I haven't even seen any prints yet, to be honest with you. Oh, okay, great. Oh, they're just going to look terrific, aren't they? Well, you could go that way, or you could go on a oh, rag. Yeah, it's I think really some of them just they probably need a little more contrast. That's about yeah. all. Yeah. You could go something completely flat as well, if you prefer to have a rag paper rather than. This is a um, sorry. It's just a straight up semi gloss. It's a rag base, right. and then it's just got a slight clay coating on it. So probably like a darker imprint, you know, like a. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brush. I don't even mind printing on matte these days, but when you put something in a frame, the frame adds the sparkle to it. 